Rebuilding a Burnett Vulcan model steam engine toy, part 20. Boiler works, my very first attempt. A test fit of the boiler barrel to the base, threading the holes 4BA for some short bolts. I made some boiler bushes for the water gauge, then I silver soldered the bushes into the barrel, followed by the flue tube into the top cap. Here are the main components laid out on the bench. From left to right, the boiler base, firebox crown, the bottom water gauge fitting, and the top cap, including the flue tube. Last but not least, the main boiler barrel, looking nice and shiny. Normally, the main Burnack Vulcan boiler is mounted to the base using nuts and bolts. I thought it would be a better idea to thread these holes 4BA, because the holes in the base a 1 8 of an inch in diameter, which is tapping size for 4BA. Once I threaded the holes, the next job was to make some short bolts by cutting down some longer ones. The third bolt was tougher than the other two, and when I cut it, it shot across the bench. This is yet another indication that the last part of the job is the one that goes wrong. This is also known as Sod's Law. I squared up the ends of the bolts using my 1 inch belt sander and here I'm screwing them into position. I made some proper bushes for the water gauge top and bottom fittings. I couldn't live with the water gauge just screwing into the boiler shell. I drilled two holes just under 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter and the bushes were machined to press into these holes. I'll be silver soldering the bushes in position very shortly. I didn't bother recording the operation of making these bushes because it is, as you can see, a very simple job a bit of quick, plain turning and threading. This clip shows the water gauge fitting screwed into the bushes, and as you can see, they don't fall out. I'll be silver soldering these bushes into the boiler from behind, and hopefully sufficient solder will flow through the joint and be visible from the front. The first thing to do is to apply some silver solder flux. Just a quick point on silver soldering. Some people get confused and use soft solder flux for this job, it is no good. This flux is called Easy Flow Number 2, and it works at a much higher temperature than soft solder flux. If you use soft solder flux on this job with silver solder, it will not work. The soft solder flux will just burn off, whereas the silver solder flux cleans the joint once it gets hot. I've fitted a larger nozzle to my blowtorch because I need more heat. This one I think is about one and a half inches in diameter and it really does give a lot of heat, I can feel the heat from here. To start with I need to heat up the boiler shell before I point the blowtorch directly at the parts I'm going to silver solder. The combination of high heat and the blast of the gas would blow away the silver solder flux. But it's okay to apply the heat directly once all of the water has boiled away. In this part of the clip, I am applying the silver solder too early. I did this on purpose just to illustrate the amount of heat that is required for silver soldering. Keep your eye on the bit of silver solder. Very soon it starts to melt. And when the correct temperature is reached, the silver solder flows around the joint. This is a very good joint, as you can see. I don't need to apply any more silver solder. I'm just trying to illustrate how to do it. You can't see this clip very well because I can't get the camera too close to the flame. Take it from me, in this area it is extremely hot. Once again, I applied the solder too early. I should really wait until the flux takes on a watery appearance and then just touch the stick of solder on the joint. Caution! Unlike silver soldering small pieces of pipe, do not put the boiler barrel into some cold water. I will eventually quench the part in water, but not yet. I've moved it out of the way, and here I've stacked a couple of the vermiculite blocks, also known as fire bricks, to act as a support for the top cap. This clip just shows the principle, but in reality it will be different. I've never made a boiler before, and I normally apply the flux to the parts to be silver soldered like this. But really it would be a better idea to use a paintbrush, it would be quicker and you'd get a more even coating. And now it's top tip time. After silver soldering the flue tube into the top cap, I will be placing it in the acid bath to remove the excess flux and generally some of the scale. I'm fitting blanking plugs to the threads because in the acid the threads will get eaten away as well and the fittings will be a slack fit in the holes. 
Once I've applied the flux, I tap the flue tube into position. I need this to be accurate, you'll see why later. The excess flux is squeezed out around the joint, and the next part of the operation is a really good idea. In my hand is a ring of silver solder that I've bent to fit around the flue tube. There's a tiny bit of a gap, but that's not important, because I will be adding some more filler solder once I'm soldering it. It's a good idea to do it this way, because the silver solder is all the way around the joint. All I need to do now is add some heat. You will notice that quite a lot of condensation occurs on the work, and I'm not really aiming the flame at the joint. I want to boil off all the water first, as I mentioned previously. Oh dear, one of my fire bricks appears to have caught fire. It is not a good idea to spray paint on top of fire bricks. Put a piece of wood on there first. It's not a problem really, the paint on the fire brick soon burnt off. Now it's a waiting game for the work to get up to the correct temperature. When it does, you'll see that the flux changes form. And after a while, the parts reach the correct temperature for the solder to melt and flow into the joint. Here I'm adding a bit more silver solder to show how well it flows around the joint, but I must stress that I don't need to do this. I beveled the hole on the underside of the top cap so there's plenty of room for the silver solder to form a fillet around the flue tube. Caution, do not overheat the work. This is more than hot enough and I'm just illustrating a point. And as with the boiler barrel, do not quench this part in water. Leave it to cool to black then leave the part on the fire bricks to cool for a while longer, and after that you can place them in the acid bath. In goes the boiler barrel. The acid that I use is really just kettle descaler called Kilrock K, and it's not even strong enough to dissolve these bones. And to be honest, I do need to top it up a bit, because it's quite weak. I've used it a lot for this purpose over the years. I'd better clarify, for cleaning silver solid components, not dissolving bones. Now it's time to put in the flue tube and the top cap assembly. I use this thin silicone rubber tubing for holding components in the acid bath. Then I replace the lid and that's it for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.